Hey yo, what's up guys, Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Uh, today with a problem 253, the meeting rooms problem. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to put in a bit of a plug here maybe before I begin, uh, in that I made a video this earlier this week that I will link down below about how to generally solve these uh, meeting room, time schedule, calendar, time overlap or, or interval overlap type questions that uh, I thought I'm biased. I thought it was I thought it was one of my better videos, and I really tried to clarify how to think about these questions in general. So if you find yourself struggling with this with this category of questions, check that out. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. Uh, otherwise, if those are mainly okay and you're just stuck on this one, then welcome. Uh, this one, arguably, I mean, is this a bit of propaganda that that this is rated a medium? Could be, it could, you could argue that it could be a hard one. Uh, I think that the, maybe the intuition behind getting to the solution in this one, I'd rank at a hard. The, the implementation might be even at an easy level because there's very little code. So I guess maybe that's why they put it at a medium. Either way, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't stress too much over the ratings. Um, let's, uh, without further ado, I was about to say without further ado, but let's clear some ado out of the, out of the way by noticing that Amazon, Bluebrick, Facebook, and Google all really like this question as of recent. So I think it's a really good question to go over. And well, that's why we're here. Let's, uh, let's have a look at what it says. We are, we're essentially given an, an array of meeting time intervals consisting of certain end times, uh, which are given in a, a nested array format. Each, each of these items is one interval, each nested array with a start and an end time. And we're told that the start time is always less than the end time. So we don't need to do any funky error checking on, on backwards time intervals or anything like that. The ask is to find the minimum number of conference rooms required to facilitate all of these meetings. Uh, in the example here, where we've got a meeting from, from 0 to 30, 5 to 10, and 15 to 20, we would need two meeting rooms to facilitate all of those. And I'll, I'll walk through that example in a bit more detail on the next page. This one maybe is a bit more obvious. Uh, we, we can get away with only using one room here. If we have a meeting between 7 and 10, and one between 2 and 4, we can use the, that meeting between 2 and 4, and then reuse it again between seven and 10. So the question is pretty short. I'd argue it's pretty understandable, but again, the solution itself might not, might not be all too obvious. And here's the reason why. Let's take a look at this example that they gave us first where the output was two. So we're given three intervals of, of meetings. Did I miss one? No, I didn't. There were three. Uh, and, and this is essentially what, what they would look like. Whoops. We would have one interval here between 0 and 30. So imagine I, I had almost like a Microsoft Outlook type calendar with a visual of a, a block meeting happening at this time. And so this, this here is, is blocked off between times 0 and 30. The next meeting we have is between 5 and 10. So notice that if we didn't have this third one, and I, just, I kind of asked you and said, okay, you've got a meeting from 0 to 30 and one from 5 to 10. How many meeting rooms would you need? I think you'd be, you'd be pretty quick, excuse me, to point out, well, we need two because, uh, you know, the, the, for the second meeting happens during the first one. So I'd agree. And then I'd ask you, let's think about why that is. How is it that you can tell that the second one happens during the first one? The correct answer there would be the fact that this, the five, so we start at, at five, whereas the previous meeting ends at 30. The beginning of that second interval dips into the the before the end of the previous interval. The fact that this 10 here is irrelevant, this 10 could have been a 40 and we would still need two rooms because at some point there's an overlap because of the my current beginning time and the previous end time. If all this is confusing, again, check that link down below on, on the video explanation on how to go about all these and, and that will clarify a lot of things. Anyways, we, we, we notice, okay, this question seems trivial for one or two intervals. Now we introduce a third. And this next one is between 15 and 20. And if we think about it for a second, well, the 15, again, it, it cuts into this 30. So we need, we definitely need a new room there. We can't do it at the, in the same room as that, that first meeting is happening in. But what about the second room, the one that we had occupied from five to 10? Well, it doesn't overlap with that one, does it? So strictly speaking, we could actually book that same room twice now and have, and have those two non, non overlapping meetings happen in the same room. And so in this case, the output that we need is two, whereas previously, or excuse me, even though we have three meetings, we could do it with two rooms, all right? And so let's think about on, a, on an even grander scale, again, even you can argue with, with, with an example of only three cases, this could be somewhat trivial. How would we generalize what just happened here? This is how we do it. We would check, I, I started with only this room, 
Okay. I only, or excuse me, this meeting. I only started with this meeting, and so I had to book a room that'll go from from zero to thirty. There's one meeting room required. So that means that I had a certain start time at zero, and and really the end time, which I'm going to focus on, and I'll, I'll call it my end time, was thirty for this meeting. All right. Then I looked at my next interval. And my next interval started at 5 and ended at 10. So because it started at 5 and not something like 35 or 45, we realized that it dug into this because my beginning here was smaller than my end. Okay, So now we did a new room and that, that end will now be 10. So this one ends at, at a time 10. And notice that I'm looking at the end times and not the beginning times. Because when I get to this next interval at 15, I realize, okay, well, I definitely can't use this room. Mm, but what if I could use this room? And well... Since this one starts, 15 comes after 10, it starts after the previous one ended, and we're good, we can reuse that room. So this one no longer ends at 10, it will now end at 20, for instance. Now, what did we essentially just do? We said, I'm going to look at my interval, my next interval, which is this one, and I'm going to look at all of the ending times of the, of the rooms that are currently in use. Of all those ending times, did I compare it to the 30 or did I compare it to the 10? Right? I compared it to the 10. The reason that I compared it to the 10 was because I noticed that if there is any room that I could use, it would be the one that gets freed up the soonest. Imagine you're, you're, you're waiting for a conference room at work and, and you need to know which one you're going to get into next. Well, you could, I wouldn't suggest this in real life, but hypothetically you could knock on all the doors and say, when does your meeting end? When does your meeting end? When does your meeting end? And the one that ends the soonest is the one that you could use. That's the logic behind it. And so, what if there was a way for us to, to track when all these end? And so you can argue, okay, we can put that in a list. And I agree with you, you can have a list that goes, we got an end time of 30, and we got an end time of 10, and maybe we got another one at 45, and we can stack up a whole bunch of meetings here. The issue with this approach, although it would, it would probably time out, it would work logically, um, because you're always checking for that early end time and then jumping in there and replacing that room now with your new end time, which would be 20. So this room that ended at 10, which is the earliest ending one, say, okay, cool, I'm going to grab that one and book it off until, until 20. All right. So is there a better way for us to keep, is there a data structure we can use? All right, I'm, I'm laughing because I think you know what I'm getting at. Is there a data structure that we can use such that this data structure will keep an organized record of our smallest value down to the biggest one? The answer is yes. I asked ask that question half rhetorically because the answer is yes. Strict, uh, not strictly speaking, I've overused that phrase already. Um, namely, the data structure that we're talking about is going to be a min heap. So min heaps are great for this because they're always going to keep the minimum value at the top. And that's what we're interested in using. We're always interested in the minimum value, minimum being the, the earliest end time of all the possible meetings that are currently in place. All right. That's the approach that we're going to take. You'll notice one more thing is that here we were... We, we got spoiled. We had a zero, and then we had a five, and then we had a 15. This approach worked because all of our, our time intervals were sorted in ascending order by start time. So I could knock the meetings off one by one as they're coming in, as they're, as they're beginning. And that's what we're going to, to want to do to actually solve this problem. And so that's, that's the logic behind what we're going to do here. Again, we're interested in seeing when is the earliest ending meeting. So by, by default, we're going to need at least one room. Unless we get an empty array, we're always going to need one room. I'm then interested in when that meeting ends to see if I can hop on in there because I'm the next starting meeting because I've sorted them all by beginning time. If I can use that room, if I begin after that room ends, perfect. I'm going to pop off that room. I'm not interested in it and I'm going to push in my own room so I can almost remove it and, and put it back in the heap. However, if I can't do that, then I'm going to say, all right, I need another room. So, and, and we'll kind of assume there are an unlimited number of, of rooms here. We're not limited to some finite capacity, though. Maybe that would be an interesting meeting rooms three problem uh, where we're going to assume that there, there's, no, there's no limit to the capacity. So we're just going to push to that heap. We're going to pent it and, and simply use up another room. When all is said and done at the end of the day, we're going to take whatever the size is of that heap and actually return that because that'll tell us the amount of meeting rooms that we are going to need in order to make the magic happen. So I hope that explanation made sense. Um, wasn't too much drawing on this one, thankfully, which is good because I suck at drawing and writing. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below as always. Um, if not, let's dive into the code and, and see how we can make this happen. So as usual, I think the first thing we might want to do is some, some basic error checking. We said then that we wanted to sort 
So sort by start time. We are then going to want to create some sort of heap. So create heap structure. Uh, we're then going to, what do we say next? We're next going to have to iterate through the intervals and, and check to see if they're overlapping or not or whether we need to you know, create new rooms. So I'll say iterate through all intervals. And then eventually we said we were going to return some value and that would be the, the length of the, the heap or whatever we're going to end up calling it. That's going to be the final value that we're going to return. So as per usual, let's take it from the top. Error checking, I'd, I'd argue just if we have no intervals or maybe even if we have, no, nah, let's put it this way. So we'll say uh, if, if not intervals, we are going to return zero. All right, we don't want to do anything if we're just given an, an empty an empty array. If we have one, we can still go through our, our logic and that won't really change anything. We've then said that we're going to sort by our starting time. Excuse me, remember that the, the input that we had was a nested array. And so this nested part, we're going to want to sort by the first element here. Meaning that I'm going to want to take my intervals and sort them using the lambda function. And the way we do that is by saying key is equal to lambda and then this x will represent any given element. You know, I can call this interval, lambda interval. So each, each one of these items that I'm looking at is an interval. And I want to sort these intervals by their, by their first value, the one at the zeroth index, which is namely the starting time. If I wanted to sort them by the ending time for whatever reason, this would have been a one, all right? I'm not going to do deep dive into, into lambda functions in this video. Next, we said we wanted to create some sort of heap structure. And what we can do for that is we can use the heap queue uh, collection from the from the, the Python collections library. And so what I'm going to say is, is maybe I'll do something like this. I'm, I'm going to say room, I'll call it rooms, just to make it clear, or maybe used rooms. And I'll, I'll make sure to return that here at the end of the day. Uh, used rooms is going to equal some, some MP array, but we're always going to want to start with the, like we're going to have to start with the first interval. So we know we're going to have at least one interval because we're, we're checking for if we have zero. And so within those, um, I'm going to add uh, intervals, and again, I'm interested in the ending time. I'm interested in the ending time because I want to only append to my heap the ending time of this meeting room. Whenever I get a new interval that I'm comparing to see if I need a, a new room for, I'm going to say, does my beginning time here overlap with the minimum ending time of, of you know whatever that minimum is at the top of the heap? So that's what I'm going to start that there. I'm then going to say we're going we're, we're going to use heap q dot heapify used rooms to turn this into a heap and just for your information you can verify this in the in the python uh in the python documentation but as of tuesday october 13th uh 2020 this operation is done in space so it's o of one space and it does so in linear time so it's o of n time complexity uh o of one space complexity in order to make this operation happen to turn the list into an array this has already been pretty well optimized for us now we want to begin by iterating through through the intervals. So what I'm going to say is for interval in intervals, and and maybe what I'll do is I'm, I'm just going to interview through the uh, from the second one on, or so the one at index one all the way to the end because we've already you know, we've already looked at this one. And what we want to say is this: so we've got two conditions. We've got if overlap, else if no overlap, and these are the two conditions that we want to work for. So if there's an overlap. We're going to define it as follows. We're going to say if the interval that I'm at, if its starting time is less than the current minimum, so if it's less than, uh, I guess it's used rooms of, of zero, so that first the minimum item, then, uh, did I get that right? We want the starting item to be yes. So compare that to the top item of the heap. If our start time is less than it, then what that means is we need to add to our heap. So we need to add to our heap. Mm, I'll do it this way. Since we want to add to the heap, we're going to uh, heap q dot heap push, and we're going to add to the heap used room. So I'll, I'll explain the syntax in just a second. And we're going to want to add, add the end time here, right? Interval one, because we're only adding add times to our excuse me, tower heap. Uh, the general notation here is we, we say heap q dot heap push, that's the name of the method. Then we have the name of the heap that we used and then the, the item that we want to push up. So that's that's how I got this syntax over here. Now, uh, I think what I'd, what I'd like to say is this, is maybe we'll say, let me think. 
uh, if if no overlap, I'll do it this way. So if there, and I think this will be a bit more, a bit more, whoops, a bit more logical to read. If there's if there's no overlap, if there's no overlap, then what we want to do is we want to say um, that we're simply going to take keep you so uh, if maybe we'll say if interval of zero if it's greater than or equal to use rooms. Uh, I think I'm not going to need this now. I'm sorry if this is confusing. It is, uh, I will promise to clarify this in a second. If our interval at zero, so our start time is greater than or equal to the latest end time, meaning there is no overlap and we can use the same room. Also, I'm assuming here by definition, if a, if a meeting ends at 10 and my meeting starts at 10, I can use the same room. Okay. If this is the case, then what I'm going to want to do is say C heap is I'm going to want to say heap Q dot heap pop, and we're going to want to pop from used rooms. So we're going to take that minimum element and pop it out because we don't, we're just, by essentially reusing that room, what we're going to do is this is after I pop this item out, I'm then going to push in my new one. Since I'm, it, it almost seems a bit counterintuitive because we're saying, well, you're going to use that same room, right? And, and this is true. In essence, what I'm, I'm trying to do is this, is if I, if I'm going to reuse that room, I need to change that top element, the one that, that ends the soonest. So I'm going to pop that one right off, which means my overall number of rooms used is going to decrease. However, I'm going to push something right back on immediately. That thing that I'm going to push on, if that is now the minimum end time, it's going to be pushed up to the to the the top of the of the min heap by by this function, by this heap q dot heap push function. Python takes care of that for us. If this is not true, so if there is no overlap, I'm going to delete this here. If there is no overlap, uh, oops, sorry. If there is no overlap, we're going to jump into this. We're going to replace the one for one. We, we, we're not increasing our total amount of, our total number of rooms used. However, if there is an overlap, we're not going to jump into here. We're going to need a new room. And so this, you know, heap push, we'll just push up a new item and it'll increase our total number of rooms by one. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm using this. I'm popping off only in the case that there's no overlap because I'm just going to replace it. I'm gonna use the same room and just replace the times. At the end of the day, all we're gonna do is return the, the size of the heap and that'll tell us how many rooms in total we need to use. I'm then gonna run this code and see if I lucked out. Cool, we did something right. So that, that worked, let me close this back down so you guys can see the code more clearly. Awesome. So just to, just to recap on everything we did, we, we noticed that we can compare, if we sort our intervals in order from start time to end time, I need at least one room. All right. Of course, uh, if we're not given this, this empty list, I need at least one room to then check if I can use this room. I need to ask hypothetically all the previous rooms, all the rooms in use and say, hey, when are you ending? When are you ending? When are you ending? I'm going to jump into the one that ends the soonest without having to iterate through a whole list of these rooms over and over again, or rather in order to avoid doing that, we use a minimum heap. Right. In, in, in Python, the default is it, when you're doing heap heapify, it'll create a min heap. By the way, if you wanted to create a max heap, so I'm, just, I'm thinking here, when you push an item off the max heap, this is a good trick. So you want to create a max heap and you're, you're adding these numbers and the minimum ones float to the top. Just add every number as a negative. And if you add it as a negative, it will still be a min heap. But now when you pop numbers off, if you need to use them, just make them negative again. And so that's how you that's how you flip it around. But anyways, that's a that's a side point. As I was saying, we we create a heap. And then for every single interval, I'm saying if there's a room that I can use, if it's potentially free, if that minimum ending time is, is either greater than or equal to my my starting time, the one that I want, I'm just going to replace my time with that one. And so take one out, put it in. There's no change to our total number of rooms. Take one team out, put the other one in. However, if they're all being used, I need to add a new room. And again, we have an infinite number of rooms here, so that's not going to be a problem. That's it for now. I hope that video makes sense. As always, if you have any questions, uh, let me know down below. I'm getting hungry. I'm going to go have dinner. Before I do that, don't forget to like, comment, uh, subscribe, and share all that good stuff. Show all your buddies. They're going to be really impressed with you because you're doing nerdy things. Um, and that's always, that's always good to help make you friends. See you guys next time. Peace.